Good morning. We're glad you could join us for our service. Although we are scattered instead of gathered, we are all together in the presence of God. And so even under these unfamiliar circumstances, we do indeed meet in his name. We begin, as on every first Sunday in the month, with a short service of prayer for healing. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, gentle and merciful. Your Son brought healing to those in weakness and distress. He broke the power of evil and set us free from sin and death, that we might become partakers of his glory. Remember in your mercy all for whom we pray. In the fullness of time, complete your gracious work that we may be restored in your image, renewed in your love, and forever praise your great and holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we make our prayer to you, saying, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant to all who seek you the assurance of your presence, your power and your peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant your healing grace to these and all who are sick that they may be made whole in body, mind and spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. Grant to all who minister to the suffering wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. Hear us, Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The, the Almighty Lord, Lord who, who is a strong tower for all who put their trust in him, whom all things in heaven, on earth and under the earth obey, be now and evermore our defence. May we believe and trust that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation, is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, speak to us, that we may hear your word, move among us, that we may behold your glory, receive our prayers, that we may learn to trust you. 
Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil, and confess our sins in penitence and faith. O oh God, God, our, our loving, loving Father, we, we know, know that, that you forgive, forgive those who are truly sorry. We ask you to forgive us for the wrong things we have done and for the good things we have not done. We have often broken your rules. We have forgotten what Jesus said. All these things we confess to you. We ask for your forgiveness. Help us to lead better lives day by day. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. reading this morning is from John's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money exchangers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. These recent weeks out of church have been a bit frustrating, haven't they? 
I expect we're all looking forward to being able to get together for worship again in a couple of weeks. And if you haven't seen it yet, to experience all the new space in church now that the pews are finally out. We know that the church is the people, not the building. But most of us have an attachment to the building where we meet. And perhaps also a powerful sense of the history of the place and all the people who've worshipped there down the centuries and come in times of celebration, sadness, anxiety, to share those things with God and with each other. That worship and sharing and simply being the place where anyone can come and be made welcome and find support in their journey of faith or their journey towards faith is what makes our church building valuable and a place where God is honoured. As it happens, some of us have actually spent a good many hours working in church over the last couple of months. But even so, going back in for worship with our church family will once again feel very much like coming home. But what if it didn't feel like that? If things were happening that made our church building feel alien, uncomfortable and just plain wrong? What if it didn't feel like home? What if it didn't feel like a place where God is honoured? Jesus comes to the temple, the place his parents first brought him to as a child, the place of all places where he should have felt at home. But it's not God, but prophet that's being worshipped here. And he gets angry. This wasn't the only time he got angry with the hypocrisy and obtuseness of some of the religious leaders and sometimes even with the people who constantly wanted him to produce signs and wonders. But only in the temple did it express itself physically. He came to the place in which God should have been honoured and found instead a noisy, chaotic scene of commerce where worshippers, especially the poorer ones, were being taken advantage of. It could not be tolerated. He had to take action. All the Gospel writers record an incident in the temple, but for Mark and Luke and Matthew, it occurs near the end of Jesus' ministry and precipitates the events that lead up to his death. John's account, which we heard today, it takes place near the beginning. Some scholars believe that they were two separate incidents, several years apart, which would just show how much this misuse of the temple mattered to him. So what do we make of all this? We love our church building, but we also know that it's not a place to confine God in. If we've learnt nothing else in this past year, surely we've learnt that we can worship and be church absolutely anywhere. And Jesus taught and worshipped in hillsides and lakeshores and marketplaces and people's homes, as well as in the synagogues and in the temple itself. Churches meet in all sorts of places too, but there is still a value in having a dedicated building to provide a focus for prayer, for praise, and for people to come to and find, well, to find what? That's really up to us. A place of prayer, a place of fellowship, a place of comfort, or something else? Would Jesus feel at home if he came and met with us in our church building, or would it make him angry? Just to be clear, I am not suggesting the latter, but it's a thought worth hanging on to as we move forward into a more flexible and more open use of the building. And we do need to be open to new ways of using it, welcoming new people in. We need to be creative in our thinking, but we must also be careful never to lose sight of what we're for and who our church building is for. We're going to need to think about what's a proper use, 
and what isn't, and about how we shared space with our community whilst maintaining the fundamental nature of the building as a place where God is honoured. When the religious authorities challenged him that day in the temple, asking once again for a miracle to prove his authority, Jesus says, destroy this temple and in three days I will build it again. Well, there's a statement to set the Pharisees among the pigeons. How can anyone rebuild 46 years of work in three days? But of course Jesus is talking about himself, not the temple building. The building is only important because of the God it was built to honour. It's only important because of God's presence. And if it doesn't do that and doesn't have that, then it's worth absolutely nothing. If we set up a building and declare its purpose is to honour God, then that had better be what it does. The way we treat the building dedicated to him says something to the wider community about how we treat God, about how we feel about him. When we get angry, we'd probably have to admit it's not usually for terribly noble reasons. But Jesus got angry for the noblest reason of all, because he could not bear that the place built to honour God should have become debased by commerce and, above all, by dishonesty. Whether we're in church, at home, at work or wherever, it's our duty and should also be our joy to honour God in all things and make all the places we meet places where everyone can feel that they have come home. God is honoured by how we worship and how we treat the places we dedicate to him. He's honoured by how we treat each other and by how we live our lives. And sometimes even by the things that we rightfully get angry about. When that anger leads us to action against injustice, cruelty or greed. The very things that make him angry too. I'm really looking forward to getting back into our church building. I'm really looking forward to being able to welcome our community in lots of different ways. I'm looking forward to getting back to the laughter, the buzz of conversation, the generous sharing of hospitality in our church once again, and most particularly to our worship together. Because in all of those ways, it does indeed fulfil its purpose as a place in which God is honoured. Amen.
We believe in God the Father, who made us and all the world. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came to this earth to be our Saviour. He died for our sins on the cross, rose again from the dead, ascended to the Father in heaven, and will come again in his glory as the judge of all people. We believe in the Holy Spirit, whom God gives to all who trust in Christ. He guides and strengthens us in our daily life and helps us to live as God's people. Amen. A prayer for this Sunday. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in his love, we bring our prayers to our Father. You have called us into the family of those who are the children of God. May our love for our brothers and sisters be strengthened by your grace. Comfort those who haven't been able to see their families for a long time and hasten the day when we can be with those we love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have called us to be a temple where the Holy Spirit can dwell. Give us clean hands and pure hearts so that our lives will reflect your holiness. Help us to honour you in everything we do and to glorify your name in our lives, our worship and our community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have called us to be a light to the world, so that those in darkness come to you. Make our lives shine as a witness to the saving grace you have given for all. As we begin to look forward to opening up our church again, guide us in all our decisions and make us a beacon to our community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have called us to be members of your body, so that when one suffers, all suffer together. We ask for your comfort and healing power to bring hope to those in distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
mighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise to our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, God and, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all and evermore. Amen. Amen.